Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Coco Nomad channel, where I talk about financial and location independence and remote work and share tips, tricks, and techniques to help you do the same and be successful in whatever you want to do. So in this video, I want to dive in a little bit, and I've talked about sort of some changes that have happened recently uh, in my life that have affected both my finances and my work, um, and a little bit of influence on my location as well, quite frankly. And... Um, but how I got here. And so a part of my story. So it made me think about I'm returning to full time employment, which I haven't done in quite some time. And I wanted to reflect on my work history and my history of doing many retirements. Uh, I've done quite a few of them in my life. Um, and they do span and it's really influenced me and my thinking about my work and my relationship to the work that I do and money, even as, 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 as much as, you know, it, it's influence and in, in my need for it uh, in my life. So I just kind of wanted to talk about that and share my experience with it, kind of help maybe guide you and sort of, there's a lot of noise out here about, you know, jobs and not working jobs and starting businesses and working for the man and not working for the man. And so it's like a lot of it is sort of like these sort of uh, diametrically opposed ends, right? You can do one or the other. It's like really binary, like, you know, it's a zero or one. And I don't subscribe to that. I don't think that that's a healthy way to look at it. I don't think it's a complete way to look at it. I think that there's a lot more nuance to it. And so I'm hoping that in me sharing how I've gone about this, warts and all, because it's not perfect, uh, that you can sort of feel better maybe about the, on the path you're on, feel more confident that, you know, everything's not off the rails and that you can do the things that you want to do, but also just plan the life and make the life that you want, design the life that you want around what you want to do the way you want to do it as much as you can within the constraints that you have. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about these semi-retirements. What is a semi-retirement? Now, for me, it was really just times in my life where I was not looking for full-time work. I wasn't returning calls about full-time work. And uh, my life was not oriented around a full-time job or venture of any kind. So I spent most of that time involved in a particular activity that I loved doing. And that changed over time. You know, some years it would be one thing and another, and I'll dive into that just a teeny bit. But I was really focused on the things that I loved doing. OK, and most of the things cost money. So I basically took the approach that I would work, save up money because I was been pretty good about being able to save money. And then I just let the money drip as I go down and the savings dwindles. And then I go back to work. Now, one huge, huge caveat here. I have been able to do that because of my career. I work in a field that while it's not we would call it back in the early 2000s, recession proof. It was definitely recession resistance. And that is I'm a software developer. I've been writing software for almost my entire career. And I've been in IT for almost my entire career. So it's even when there wasn't a, nest, a programming job per se, I've always been able to at least secure like a position in the IT department doing something because I had learned a bunch of different skills. My formal education is computer science, is my, my bachelor's degree. So I knew enough and had enough experience that I could get work in the computing or IT field, even if it wasn't just directly writing code. Um, although most of the time, once people find out how to write code, I usually end up writing code for them. So uh, so that's just to set the table for what the semi-retirements are for me. And I'll share some of these periods of time when I had semi-retirements. Um, and I won't go through all of them. So I'm just going to start in like the last 20 years. It's so like from 2001 to 2004, I left a full-time job uh, working for a dot-com. It's like right at the peak of the bus, the boom, like it was, I left it and it kind of went sideways. And for the next three years, I didn't work full time. I actually spent a lot of time um, just kind of hanging out. I, I spent a lot of time in coffee shops and watching watching movies. I watched a lot of movies. And, uh, I spent a lot of time in coffee shops. Like I think at that time, the whole scene about like poetry, open mic poetry and stuff was really big. So I spent a bunch of time in coffee houses and I played golf during the day 
and things like that. So I was a golf bum, is what I like to say. Uh, I spent a lot of time playing golf. I play golf all the time. And uh, I did that for about three years. And um, I did work a little bit sort of side hustle, if you will, uh, doing some consulting. I used to, I did a brief gig at a hospital in Georgia writing crystal reports. If anybody knows what that is, you know, it's a long time ago. So in this hospital, I would run reports taking data because I was a database guy too. So I could take this data, make sense of it, give you these reports for different departments, whether you know it was an intake uh, project that I did for the emergency room or the radar department needed a better way to get a hold of like their appointments. Um, the one department needed me to actually make these reports and put uh, barcodes, scan, barcodes on them so they could scan um, the, the things that they were doing or the procedures like radiology would do procedures and then Put these reports together so they know when where these procedures were being performed a better idea of them so that was pretty much the only real work that i did and fortunately this was my first uh journey into travel they allowed me back in 2002 to just run those reports and email them back from spain i left went to spain because i wanted to do language i wanted to learn spanish beyond what i had learned in high school and middle school and really you know uh, get fluent in the language. So I went to a language school in Malaga, Spain and spent three months there. And so while I was doing that, I would just once a week, and this is predating that whole four hour work week thing. I once a week, I would go to an internet cafe. I would bring my laptop. They would have to move this water bucket so I could plug mine in. And I would just do my stuff and send the reports back. And while I was there, since I was already there, I'd started a blog. So I had a blog that I, and that was my life. That was my semi-retirement. Most of the nights I was playing guitar at the house with my friends at the house and we would play music and we would drink wine and we would have fun and I would travel around. I traveled around uh, Spain for a bit into Portugal and, you know, just enjoy myself. And then eventually I came back to the States and uh, by 2004, I started working again. So that was the end of my first uh, mini retirement uh, that I'm talking about here. So, and then it was another period. I did pretty much steady work, contracting work full-time and or full-time work until about 2010. And then I left another job. I really, this time, my project or my semi-retirement was around me making apps for the app store. I started doing um, iOS development and I really got into it. And so at one point I said, I'm going to stop doing this for a full-time job and not even doing the project work. I just want to work on this app idea that I had. Had an app idea, started working on it and got really into that. Um, the app, I had actually ended up making three versions of this app, putting it on the store. It, it never blew up, right? It never like made a ton of money, um, but it was like, it gave me the confidence to know that I could do the work though. Like, and it was nice and I felt good to have uh, something out in the app store. Ironically, it led to me working for the company that ended that period of semi-retirement. So at that time, I had relocated, left Atlanta. I owned a house in Atlanta that I bought in 2003, but I didn't really live in it. My mom lived in it for a while, and then for a while, I just rented it out. And then for a while, it just sat empty while I was in Atlanta. And uh, by the 2010, 2012 period, I started doing remote work is when I started remote working. And that's when I was doing two weeks in Atlanta, two weeks at the house in Carolina, slowly migrating into being in Carolina full-time by 2012. So, and then taking that full-time job to work with the company TeamSnap. And so I worked for TeamSnap uh, for about three years in that period. And then it led to my most recent mini retirement. So I started a travel program in the beginning of 20, January of 2016 called Remote Year. And I was to travel around the world 12, 12 months, 12 different countries with a bunch of other people. About three months into the journey, I got FOMO because all my friends were doing side trips that I wasn't able to do. I was getting a little burnt out on the jobs. I'd been there for a while working in the same code base. And I really just needed a bit of a sabbatical. So I thought I would just take the rest of that remote year off, enjoy that travel time, and then come back, you know, come back to work. If I, whether it was come back to work for TeamSnap or to come go work for someone else. And then I was going to come back to Goldsboro, North Carolina and open up a co-working space. I had already spotted out a building that I wanted that I could just build out. It was going to be relatively cheap to do. And so I had that plan. Well, best laid plans of mice and men. We know what happens. 
uh, halfway through the year, I decided I didn't want to come back to the U.S. anymore. And I do have a video that I'll drop in the, in the description about why I left the U.S. And it was in, in that time is when I started thinking about those things and decided that I didn't have to, nor did I want to. So I did briefly come back to the States, started selling my stuff and just continue my sabbatical. So when I started it, I had saved up a bunch of money just to do the trip in case the company wouldn't let me, but they, they had no problem with it. That's because they're awesome. Um, and I saved up a bunch of money. And so I spent most of that time just enjoying my travels. And I did that until probably I picked up one uh, project in like mid 20, 2017. I worked for a couple of months and then again, didn't do anything else for like about a year. Took on another project that I, I did about a year's worth of work on uh, part time. It's a part time gig. All this stuff is part time. And then I did a couple in uh, 2020 where I was working one, it took about two or three months and the project was over. So in my mini retirements, I'm really just kind of working part time. I don't know if you would call that if you're a fire person, I've been, I've been learning a lot about the fire movement. And I think that's sort of like the barista fire, maybe I would be a barista fire person, but my FI number I hadn't hit at all. So I just saw this as a way of life. I would just do this. And that's just how I would move around from job to job, basically a job or task nomad as well as I'm nomading around uh, the world. So that was my most recent one until this year when I finally decided that I was ready to sort of in that phase and in that mini retirement. And I needed to start thinking long term. And if you watch my 10% uh, rule video, I'll talk a little bit about what the impetus was for that. Um, just in short, though, like I, I know for myself, I needed to start amassing some more resources long term for retirement, but also that my mother is getting older and she's getting really close to retirement. And so I wanted to think about making sure that she's okay. So I went back to work full time. And so I'm like, all right, this is where I am now just getting started with this, even as you watch this video, it's very, very new. And that is the end of those mini retirements. But I do plan on having some others. I'm absolutely sure this will happen. So what did I learn in those three periods of mini retirement? Well, the first lesson was to embrace the nonlinear path. Just realizing that the best laid plans don't always work out. Um, when I did have, I had a client on retainer, it was a nice, you know, piece of income. They would pay me, you know, a little bit of money a month just to be available for a block of hours. So, and they didn't always use those hours. So it was nice. It was like I could get a check and, you know, if they need me to do something, it was good. If they didn't, you know, it's so fun. The check still 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 in the bank and so it was a way for me to kind of fund myself going forward I lost them some of my fun projects and my side projects my apps didn't really become the thing that I wanted them to be so things don't always work out the way you want them to uh, the second thing I learned is to seize the day carpe diem um, you, you, you can't put off everything until later. I was raised in a very very conservative household and was taught that I should work my entire life so I can enjoy the fruits of my labor when I retire. And one of the things that I realized when I was on this most recent sabbatical traveling was I went to Machu Picchu and I'm watching people climb and we hiked on the way in for two days. And then climbing up the stairs and walking around and I'm watching people of various ages try to make their way around. And I noticed that on other trips, I've been to other places and seeing like, and I asked myself, it's like, do I want that to be my retirement life? I'm finally getting to go to these places, but I'm 70 years old. And then I realized one place that was not going to happen. I went to Muay, I went to uh, Thailand and trained Muay Thai. I'm not going to be 70 year old and fight Muay Thai. Maybe I'll still spar and, and like hit the bag, but like those kicks like take a lot out of you. And even at my age, I'm like, it's hard. It's rough. You're sore. And I just like, if I'm going to do it, I'll do it now and have that great experience and train and, 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 and do all that. But that's not something I could wait to do. So I wanted to find a way to make sure in my life, I can always fit those kinds of things in that it didn't require me to wait until I was much older. Um, number three, now this one's probably one of the most important in terms of planning and moving forward for anyone that's listening. And that's marketable skills provide flexibility. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I have benefited. I don't discount that the, the privilege and recognizing that I happen to have skills in a very, very desired area. And that is in IT and software development. So for me, I was able to be flexible. I'm not sure if I worked in another career, particularly as far back as 2001 that I would have been able to do that. 
Now, now the landscape has changed a bit different and there are a lot more uh, careers, a lot more skills that are marketable that you can do remotely, that you can do over the internet. Uh, we have more tools and the expectation is a bit different. People are a lot more flexible and willing to work with people across large borders, across different time zones and great distances. And it's a lot easier to do so. But, but keep that in mind, make sure that you have skills that are marketable. It's important to do the things that you love, but I love playing poker and golf and nobody's paying me to do either one of those things at all, I promise you. I'm decent at each, but not good enough to make money. So there you go. And then number four, which is the one I'm coming back to in this period is savings make a huge difference. You, if you wanna do a mini retirement, make sure that you are taken care of, that you're making sure that your expenses are covered. You know, now you can do that with part-time work and that's why I said the flexibility, you can be flexible, but you wanna make sure you have these things on the table. One of the reasons why I'm really adamant about the seven income streams that I've been talking about is that I want to do another mini retirement. I'm not too old that I can't get back out here and maybe I won't fight anymore, but still it's just a matter of like being able to do the things I wanna do in the time that I want to be able to do them without having to worry about money. So the savings is an important part of that, but those income streams can make sure that I'm always replenishing that savings supply. So there's always money there that I can go to the places I want to do and enjoy the things that I'd like to enjoy, enjoy these travels, enjoy this wonderful world that we live in. Okay. So that is just my take on semi-retirements. And I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Click like and comment. If you want to hear more talks like this, of course, comment about more topics or we can drill in deeper if you have any questions or, or just your inputs. Have you done a mini retirement or multiple mini retirements? And what is your take on it? How have you handled it? Um, clearly, I made some mistakes because there's no savings, but maybe you did a bit better and like share like some of the things that you did to kind of offset that to make it a bit easier for you to continue to do it the way that you want to do it. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thank you so much for watching, listening, supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Have an amazing day and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.